For many, this will be a nostalgic trip. Freddy Fish has made many children happy in the past, including me. Released in 1994 by Humongous Entertainment, Freddy Fish was in the early era of 90s. Graphical point-and-click adventure games, next to games like Full Throttle, The Dig, and later installments of King's Quest. The real difference with those titles was that Freddy Fish was marketed as a point-and-click adventure for kids. In 1994, I got my first PC, a Packard Bell. It came packaged with some games, of one of which was Freddy Fish. I searched high and low to find a photo of me sitting in front of it, but sadly, I couldn't find any. So here, have a photo of me sitting in front of my Xbox, in the best quality that was available like 15 years ago. Back in those days, the Super Nintendo or Sega Mega Drive were the things I would spend most of my time on. So, imagine my surprise when I actually saw the game running for the first time. Fluent animations, a storyline and clear voice audio. My heart was getting full pumped as a 12 year old. As said, this game is targeted towards kids. In my opinion, from the age of 5 to 12 years old. But it doesn't mean you can't enjoy it as an adult. Because I did for this review. Thoroughly. As this was 26 years ago, the whole game felt like I never played it before. I couldn't recall any scene. That's what happens when you get older. But I was also glad that I couldn't remember a thing. The game isn't anything spectacular or out of the ordinary when it comes to gameplay. You do side quests for characters in order to obtain items that you need to use in other side quests. The story goes that Freddy Fish, her grandma, I always thought that Freddy was a boy for some reason, has lost her treasure containing kelp seeds. These are a form of seaweed and there is no explanation why and how the treasure chest is lost. Just go and click to solve that mystery. A lot of you older players will get a kick of nostalgia feelings by just clicking on random things on screen. Almost everything you see is nifty animated in a humorous way. Although I was clicking almost the whole playing session, after half an hour I was tired of clicking on things. It's a great form of entertainment for a short period. The best thing I clicked on, however, was this. This had me chuckle out so loud. But here I am as an adult, it's 2020 and I remember sucking really hard at this game back then. While I did not suck this time, the game is really, really easy. You travel around from scene to scene using the found items. The puzzles aren't cryptic, instead they are actually pretty logical. Use a bone to lure the dog away. Get a clock from the car to give to the pervert stingray. Use a fishing rod to grab a bottle from the angry fish. The only thing that was a bit hard was remembering the correct routes back and forth in order to get to a previous puzzle. A thing I have to mention is that the voice acting is great. Not only is the voice of Freddy very child friendly, each character has their own likable acting talent with different accents and funny lines. Oh me oh my, oh me oh my. Freddy, 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 it's wonderful. I when I'm sad, I when I'm good or bad. Arg! There are also a few other things you can do to sidetrack from your main quest. One is watching performances in the underwater movie theater. These are really short animated clips of underwater sea creatures performing on stage. <laughs> Great for a few seconds, but nothing worth noting. Another one is doing math questions at Mr. Starfish, ranging from easy to advanced. What is the sum of 40? 53! You're right! It's a great way of teaching children math and has been nicely slipped into an adventure game like this one. The last mini game you can do is feeding turtles. Freddy needs to throw disgusting jellyfish towards the incoming turtles to rank up points. There's no punishment for excessively throwing the jellyfish so I went all full automatic. I do need to mention that there are bad guys in the game. These are two sharks. They're a stereotypical duel of dumb and smart but they pose no threat during the game. Their story is really downplayed. The bottle ain't here boss. Maybe somebody else found the voice. <laughs> Maybe somebody else found it first. As they just received orders from the so-called squid father who wants the kelp seeds. Why? No idea. I know it's a kid's game, but as an adult, I demand answers. Damn it. The game gets wrapped up when you find a treasure chest inside a sunken ghost ship. Okay. It's missing all reasons, but after you found the chest, the two sharks enter as well and one to half the chest. Freddy has some charm, I guess, and she talks the sharks out of it, saying that the kelp seeds are for everyone and they need to be shared. And so, the sharks disappear and Freddy drops kelp seeds along the way back to grandma's house. Kelp, you found the kelp, the marvelous kelp. 
And so the story ends well for Freddy Fish in his first episode. I think you can't blame me saying this, but the game is in 2020 still fantastic to play. Sure, if click and point adventures aren't your thing, don't even come near. But there's a lot to experience, to laugh about, to recollect those buried nostalgic feelings. It's a short game. I finished it in under an hour. However, in a second playthrough, puzzles get shuffled up, mixed and items rearranged. This is a unique thing to be honest and makes the game worth playing again. Freddy Fish its story isn't fantastic, nor is it coherent in any way. It's not meant to be. Kids back then loved it and will love it even today. The complete Freddy Fish package can be found on Steam now. And even better, the series, up to episode 4, has been released on Android and Apple mobile devices with a touchscreen input. This game series deserves no less. This was episode 10 of In Retrospective, a series where I play older games to see if they hold up in 2020. If you like this episode, great! There is a subscribe button down below. Hit that to see more future episodes and get notified on the fly by hitting that notification bell. And I will see you on the next episode of In Retrospective.